So my goal is to make this a short video and give you some hopefully really good advice if you are thinking of becoming a math tutor or you just have questions about being a math tutor, what's it like? I'm gonna do my best in this video to keep it short and give you the most important things. There's other things too, and we'll talk about those later, but I just wanna highlight the main points. And this comes from a person named Adam who sent me an email and the subject was math tutoring advice. Let me read you the message. Hello, mighty sorcerer. I'm a junior math stats major and looking to become a tutor at my university. Beyond being well-versed with the material, what are other things that make a tutor and or teacher successful? Thanks. So first, um, let me just mention that you mentioned being well-versed with the material. So I want to add that you should try to be well-versed. And notice I underlined the word try. What I mean by that is it's okay if you're not able to learn everything, right? It's okay. Do your best. Go in there with full confidence and you know, know everything. That's always the best way. But when you run into situations where you don't know, it's okay to say, I don't know. It's okay to defer to someone else. Um, you know, not everyone knows everything, right? So try to be well-versed do your best and I agree it is a requirement right you want to be well versed people are coming to you and they're asking for math help um, you should you know hopefully you can help them so that's that's the first point I want to make the second one is that they are just learning okay keep that in mind you know when you're tutoring people they're coming in and they're asking homework questions maybe or you know questions about their notes or just conceptual questions they need help right they're going through the process of struggling. You know, they're the ones that actually have to do the homework. They have to turn it in. They're the ones taking the test, right? So um, keep that in mind. And I think it makes you more, I don't, I, don't, I don't have the word, compassionate towards their position, right? They're learners. They're struggling. We, you know, we know how hard it is. We know how hard math is. Math takes a lot of effort. It's difficult. It's challenging. Um, it takes a lot of time. And sure, some math is easier than others, or it's at a lower level, but I remember working really hard to learn about logarithms, right? Even the basic stuff. So when you remember their learning, it'll help you remember, you know, what was it like when you were learning? So you can remember your struggles and, you know, relate to them. It also helps you um, be more patient, right? If they ask the same question over and over again, um, you know, it just helps increase your patience. So I just think it makes you better because you can relate to them better because you're thinking of them as learners and you know what that's like. And I think that's, that's key. That's really, really key. And the last kind of like, just like big picture thought I want to mention in this video is to remember that you are just learning. So what I mean by that is, again, it's okay. It's okay not to know, right? It's okay not to know. And don't let it hold you back. Like if you're thinking about becoming a tutor, and this is something that a lot of people have as a thing, like it's a fear that a lot of people have. They want to be math tutors, but they're nervous because they think they won't be able to answer all the questions. I've heard this a lot from a lot of people. And I, and I had that same fear too. And I say, just go for it, it's okay. I was a tutor for a little while, not, not super long, but I tutored at a college for maybe six weeks or a little bit more. It wasn't a long time. Um, and I thought it was fun, you know? So yeah, those are three things that I want to mention. I mentioned these were big picture things because they are. Let me just recap them and we'll talk about some other things. So one uh, is try to be well-versed. I think that's, that's super key. Two, remember um, they are just learning. And then also remember that you are just learning. So those are the things um, I, think, I think that are important when it comes to tutoring. So yeah. This book, by the way, I have it here just because um, this is the book I was looking at uh, a few days ago. So I grabbed it. I thought, let me just grab something here for this video really quickly. Um, is called Algebraic Structures. And it was written by Serge Lang. Uh, Serge Lang passed away many years ago. He was a uh, very uh, famous mathematician, wrote tons of books. He has tons of great books. This book, I guess it's a beginner book. I mean, it is, but... There are easier beginner books than this one. I like this book. Um, one thing I don't like about this book, which is something that I guess it would be too much, but I, I wouldn't mind it if the definitions weren't bold instead of italics. I know that sounds um, a little 
picky, but it's something that I, I would have appreciated. But other than that, I like the pace of the book. It's fairly quick. Um, it, it goes pretty quickly. So if you've seen Abstract Algebra before, I just got to give it a whiff. Ah, oh, this book is incredible. Incredible. It even talks about modules with this. Cool, right? We may consider a generalization of the notion of a vector space over a field, namely a module over a ring. Right, let R be a ring. And then here they defined uh, modules. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. So anyways, that's my advice for tutoring. And uh, if you're interested in abstract algebra, this is a good book. I believe um, the newer uh, editions have a different name. I, I think it's just called like undergraduate abstract algebra or something. I don't have it. I don't have the newer edition of this book. I also believe the newer edition might have more material. This one's very, very thin. One of the things I've noticed with uh, Serge Lang's books, by the way, and I feel like this is not exclusive to this one. I have um, his book, it's called The First Course in Calculus, and I have two different editions, and they're very different, right? So they have different content. Uh, one, one's just, it's a much thicker book than the other. So it's kind of interesting. Zorn's Lemma. Zorn's Lemma is something that uh, is used a lot. And I was just gonna say it, and here it is. Uh, let V be a non-zero vector space over the field K. Then there exists a basis of V. And so this proof uh, uses Zorn's Lemma. This is a famous proof that uses Zorn's Lemma. So you're basically proving that every vector space has a basis. And to prove that, to prove that you have to use Zorn's Lemma, which is interesting, right? So that's what makes it so important. Makes it so important. Yeah, Max Zorn, great mathematician. I should um, make a video on Max Zorn someday because I, you know, I, I, I heard, and this is just something I heard, um, you know, when, when Max was, uh, you know, in his old age, you know, he would, he would go to like the talks. This is just something I heard from someone who uh, says they knew him. I heard this, yeah. So, so I, someone I know knew Max Zorn and uh, he said that when Max would go to the talks, you know, it doesn't matter, it didn't matter what the talk was, he, he would stand up at the end of the talk and he would ask like some like deep question. And I, I just think that's, and even in his really, I mean, I, he lived, Max Zorn lived, I'm pretty sure he lived for a long time. I can look it up here. I mean, Max Zorn, um, very, very uh, famous mathematician. Zorn's Lemma is one of those like really important things. Yeah, so he died in 1993. So yeah, 86, so I'm pretty sure he, he practiced mathematics even until a very late age.